Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a classic, classic polynomial number theory problem from the USMO 1974 problem number one. Try it out, especially if you're new to polynomials, integer number theory stuff, for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 40, not more than an hour. If you'd like to go along with us, give this a go for the next five, 10 minutes. So we must really, like first, the first thing here is say, so it's impossible that something holds true. How do we prove those statements? The answer is we say, well, let's assume it's possible and then let's get to a contradiction. That's really the quickest way to do these sorts of things. Okay, so there exist, so the possible, the converse is there exist A, B, C, distinct, such that this holds true. So now with that, what do we do? We can look at a degree of polynomial, everything, yada, yada. But let's remember, what are we dealing with? A polynomial having integer coefficients. What do we use in that case? I invite you to pause for three minutes, figure that out. And the answer is we use the identity. I, I don't know, should I call this an identity or what? But that x minus y divides p of x minus p of y. If x and y are different integers and a polynomial p has integer coefficients. Why is this the case? Just go compare the terms. And this is used incredibly often. So with this in mind, what would we have for our problem statement here? Pause for five minutes, play around, see what happens. And the answer is, well, we have, say, putting in a and b, a minus b divides p of a minus p of b, which is equal to b minus c. And we'd get b minus c, divides c minus a and we'd get that c minus a divides c minus a a minus b now what do we have here pause for five minutes and figure it out and the answer is well wait a second these are some integers x y and z whose sum is equal to zero and I have x divides y, y divides z, z divides x. Something doesn't smell right here. So x plus y plus z is equal to zero. x divides y, y divides z, z divides x. So wait a second, this means that b minus c divides c minus a, which divides a minus b. So the absolute value of all these terms are equal, right? But we have that x plus y plus z, because like this divides this. So it can't be that this is greater than this or smaller than this. And none of these are zero. Very important, a, b, and c are distinct. So what does this mean? Well, if their absolute values are zero, we have three different things. And they're, I'm sorry, the absolute values are the same for all of these. And their sum is equal to zero. I have x plus y plus z is zero. And the absolute value of x is the absolute value of y is the absolute value of z. How can these, both of these things be true? Well, these two things imply that x, y, and z are all zero. The reason they do is because, say all of their absolute values were positive, we'd get three x is equal to zero. If two were positive, one was negative, we'd get x is equal to zero. If two were negative, one was positive, we'd get minus x is zero. If all three were negative, minus three x is zero. In every case, these two imply that x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to zero, which implies a is equal to b, a contradiction. And this finishes up, this legit just finishes up the problem, just like that. Problem, done, QED. And this is a problem from number theory that I think you need to try out when you're doing polynomials. You need to see it. This is the solution. And as always, thanks for problem solving.